This is Twit. Google used a 64 camera rig to train portrait portrait lighting AI, which is I put this awesome. in for Ant. This yeah, is why I put. I wanted that reaction. So they're essentially they're using machine learning models to understand uh, portraiture, so that they can then put that model in the camera. Is that what they're doing, Ant? Well, again, you, you go back to, and I hate to make this about Apple, but go back to what Apple did in its last release with um, the camera app and figuring out, you have portrait mode, yes, where it's going to aesthetically blur out the background for whatever person you're trying to shoot. But then you need to have some sort of light, light source in there that may not already be there. And that, that's the beauty of being able to sort of drag it around on the screen and make it to where it's natural looking and not just a blob of an exposure, exposure increase. And this is just the next step in that to making uh, photography on the smartphone is still just a one-click thing and not a lot of thought process into it. Uh, this is uh, on the Google AI blog, Enhancing Portrait Lighting with Machine Learning. And they actually, this rig, they, they brought in 70 models and uh, 64 cameras, 331 individually programmable light sources, and they just photos, photograph people with different face shapes, genders, skin tones, hairstyles, clothing, accessories. For each person, they generated synthetic portraits in different lighting environments. Here's an example. And then I guess the machine learning uh, it created a model, a, a data set, so that the machine learning could then look at your picture and say where how they're going to apply the light. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is great because you can put this in uh, any type of smartphone camera that doesn't necessarily have all of the uh, hardware, you know, to, to be able to pull this stuff off because it's computational. Right. So that means keeping these phones under $1,000. The other thing Google does is, and they talked about this at I.O., uh, two, a year and a half ago, is they are able to get these models, once they train them, and they're very large when they train them, but, but they can then get them down to a size small enough that you could easily put them on a, on a, on a smartphone. This model, this portrait lighting mo uh, model, is 10 megabytes. That's all. Mm. It's kind of amazing. Um, lots of training, it's lots of information. This is, this is AI for the good, not the evil. <laughs> like I said, I, I think I mentioned this last week where my family, they're, they're just sort of used to it. If I say, hey, let's get a picture, uh, if we're out and about somewhere, they automatically look for, to see where the sun is. You know, they, they just oh, have wow. to learn kind of over time yeah. um, how, to, how to make it work for the, for the camera. But now they don't, you know, if something like this is in place, you don't have to think about that because it's just snap it and go. Sparing. But then economical. What? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Ant? What do you mean? What's I'm still AI'd gonna keep business. shooting because no, no, I have no, no. fun. No, I meant like your tips. In oh no 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 no! <laughs> Not in we still need Ant. <laughs> I'll tell you. Too. I'll tell you the deal. Yeah, I've realized this, and I mentioned it in a couple of shows. So I apologize if you're hearing me repeat this. But the 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 camera phones do too much. They take they they give you a great picture, but they do they take all the creativity out of it. Mm -hmm. They decide this is the image is what's gonna look like. This is gonna be the best result. And Ant, you still need Ant. You still need a good tool. You need the creativity if you want to do, if you want to make those decisions, not the AI. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to have a kind of a, in a way, a dumber camera, a more um, a manual camera, right? And then you need the help of Ant. I, I hope to step in on the creative st standpoint yeah. out of it, but I also want to step in as far as the fundamentals, you know, to help people understand why that AI is doing what it's doing. Um, can you and, optimize, can you, knowing that the AI is going to be doing something, the example I always use, I took a great picture with a good camera and then with the iPhone of uh, my family sitting around a fire pit. And the picture I liked was the one where the, with the, I turned the exposure down so it's profiles and just lit by the fire. And the phone right. said, no, 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 you want all the Lift details. The shadows. You want everything. Yeah. And I don't, I, I didn't. that. Yeah. <laughs> So is there a way to kind that. of anticipate what the phone's going to do and override it? I, I can't speak to the iOS side, uh, but at one point in time, the Google camera app had that HDR plus feature yes. where you can toggle it on and off. Um, I haven't seen that 
feature in there in the last uh, two updates or so. I, I, I don't know why I can't turn it off. It's almost like they're saying, you know what, we're going to make this better for you. And in general, yeah, that's it's great to do that. But, you know, just like you said, every now and then you want to have those dark shadows there because it sets the mood for the scene. Mm-hmm. 